Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show. My name is Dr. April Brown and today we're talking about a problem that many couples, about a third of couples when they've done surveys over and over again are suffering with. It's overcoming sexual problems. And today I've been um, blessed to have two guests that are experts in the field of helping couples. I have Tally Boots here and Dr. Corey. And so um, I would like to thank both of you for coming on the show. Of course. Yes. <laughs> yes. And would like to understand your journey on how you became working in the sex field, but also how you came in helping couples overcoming sexual problems. So we'll start with you, Tally. Tell me about your journey. Okay, well, um, I guess my journey started probably in middle school or high school. I was always that girl who was talking to all of her friends about, um, you know, periods and your first sexual experience. And then fast forward to college and I took a sexual health class as a, you know, elective. It blew my mind. I was so okay. excited that you could make money at this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then I realized that was what I needed to do. I okay. needed to be a therapist, and I started my journey in school, which took forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very funny because my story, very, very similar. Um, mm -hmm. So throughout grade school, I was a guy who people came to for all the relationship questions and okay. all the sex questions. Um, in the same way, I took a, it was a correspondence course in sexuality. It's like, wow, yeah. you can study this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is actually part of a degree, um, and now I can actually find a job in a profession doing this? Yeah. Yes, sign me up. Um, <laughs> That's so, <awesome>. Yes. Yes, <laughs> good. Yeah, it was good that you guys had the same experience. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, in a great field, and it's a field that is needed. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, you both have extraordinary websites and stuff, and when you help couples out. And um, on your website, Tally, I noticed you have a program called Maternal and Paternal Therapy. Mm -hmm. What exactly is that? So, you know, that was just my phrasing on what happens to couples when they decide to start a family. Okay. And so it starts there, right? There's obviously a lot of things that happen when you have a new baby mm -hmm. or if you have, um, if you adopt a child or foster a child, if you introduce a child into a relationship, a lot of new stuff happens. Right. And it affects not only the relationship, but the sexual relationship of the partnership. Of course. And so it starts there, but it continues on, you know, until right. they leave the nest and right. maybe pass that. <laughs> yes. So I just wanted to bring focus to okay. couples um, and especially families that this is something that we kind of talk about. We talk about being a mom and being a sexual mom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yes. Yes. Because sometimes that's yes. difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And then you have on your um, website a discernment. Yes. 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 Uh, so discernment counseling is for those couples who are seriously considering divorce, uh, but are unsure um, of which path they want to take. And so okay. often there's a uh, leaning in spouse who wants to continue a relationship uh, and a leaning out spouse who is, again, unsure. Okay. Um, so unlike traditional therapy that assumes two couples want to work on it and build uh, a better relationship, discernment, um, what I like about it is it slows the decision process down. Uh, so instead of rushing into a decision to, to divorce, let's slow down. A lot of times getting to that point, uh, we're full of frustration um, and anger and resentment and just flat out exhaustion. We just want it to be done. Uh, so what discernment does is it slows the process down and helps individual find clarity uh, so they can make an informed choice that they can stand by in the future. So that in the future, they can live without regrets. Whatever path they choose, let this be an informed decision with clarity so that I can live without regrets. Oh, welcome. Yeah, great. Yeah. That's a great program to have. Yes, yeah. and I love how you um, phrased it. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the issues that many couples have, of course, is overcoming sexual problems. And right now we're going to take a small break, but when we get back, we're going to get into the meat of that. Uh, growing up, I had uh, many, many teachers in my life who taught me many wonderful things. Uh, one of the things, or one of the areas that they did not teach me a lot about was in the area of sexuality. Um, so it was not until uh, grad school that I got in touch with many mentors and teachers 
who were able to, to educate me in that way. Uh, over the course of my career, realized that many men were uh, lacking in this area as well, where we were not actively cared for in the sexual area of our life. And so part of uh, my passion has been coming alongside men to help them in this particular area, uh, where uh, I believe most men want to be good sexually. Uh, where we don't want to abuse our sexuality, we don't want to misuse our sexuality. Again, we've just not been taught how uh, to do any better. Uh, so there's a way where we can uh, find a better vision for our sexuality. Uh, from a godly perspective, why was our sexuality created? Uh, created to reflect uh, the intimacy of God, created to reflect the, the goodness of God, created to, to reflect the beauty of God. And many guys have no vision of that. Uh, so being able to find that, that vision for our sexuality, um, and with an intention to now live that vision out. Uh, what are those, those means, what are those behaviors that allow us to, to live uh, truly well as a sexual being? We're in all our relationships, our relationships with our, our spouse, our relationship with, with our friends, our relationship with God can now be enhanced when we tap into to that sexual energy. That sexual energy is no longer wasted um, on um, mindless pursuits, uh, that sexual energy can now be used to cultivate life, to bring more goodness uh, to the world around us. Well, welcome back to the Bringing Intimacy Back, where intimacy is real. And today we've been talking about overcoming sexual problems. We have two guests on our show who are experts in the field, um, Tally and Dr. Corey here. And as we're starting the conversation, what do you guys think are some of the common problems that people have in connecting with one another sexually in an intimate relationship? What are some of the common sexual problems that you guys see? Uh, yeah, one of the common ones that I see initially is just a lack of communication. Um, mm -hmm. And so just not talking about the issues. Mm -hmm. We can have sex with each other, but rarely actually don't, don't talk about it, where even in relationships it becomes uh, very, very taboo. And so that would be one of the, the first ones that, that I notice. Mm -hmm. That's a huge one. Also, differences of libido. Mm -hmm. um, for example, you know, I want to have sex this many times. I don't want to have sex at all. Um, and breaking down what that libido even looks like. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. It's very important. Right, and I would yeah. say some of those two things are connected. Oh, yeah. Right, and so <laughs> yeah. the failure to, to talk about it, um, and so if we have those different libidos, yes. mm -hmm. uh, some of it even goes into understanding where we're not talking about it, and so yeah. now there's a misunderstanding mm -hmm. of those different desires, mm -hmm. uh, which leads to a lot of frustrations. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Do you see that some of these things that we're talking about have, um, hate to say, like gender roles to it? like? Uh, some, uh, so when you get into some of the, the details, there can be some, some gender aspects there. Um, or some of it for me would be in the misunderstanding of libido and how the different libidos work. Okay. Uh, where sometimes for many uh, guys, uh, we assume uh, that women's libidos work the same way that ours do. Yeah, that's um, what everybody thinks, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so, Can you clarify and let them know? <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, There's a lot of education in sex yes. therapy. <laughs> right, um, and so helping to, to build just communication with, with couples. Um, and then, um, like Talia saying, is education, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, we just don't know any better. So guys come in, and again, we have that assumption that we have the same operating system, right. mm -hmm. um, and we don't. Um, and so getting into, are you asking kind of what some of those things are for, for guys? Yes. Um, yeah, so for guys, that, that desire often looks like with higher testosterone, and this is not for, for all guys, but for many guys with high testosterone, we have what we call initiating desire. Okay. And so we have that sexual surge, and we're thinking about sex, and now we're initiating and moving toward a sexual encounter. Right. Mm -hmm. um, well, for many women, it's the opposite. Um, it's more of a receptive desire. And so once... Uh, the behavior is engaged, then desire kicks in. Mm -hmm. Now I'm able to, okay, yeah, this feels mm -hmm. good. I want to do this. Um, right. Yeah. And that's where the, the sexual health and education piece really comes into mm -hmm. play is that it's a little bit, you know, our sexualities are very different, but at the basic level, we're very similar mm -hmm. and we're made up of the same parts. It's just in different orders. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I like to say to couples, that we need to be aroused first before we have desire to have sex. For, for some men, and sometimes most men, their um, arousal happens like that. Right. 
and then you know, like their uh, spouse is walking across the room mm -hmm. naked. <laughs> Boom. Yes. Ready they have the desire, yeah. right? Normally for women, it's a whole lot slower. It might take all day long <laughs> of building up with sweet text messages, mm -hmm. or I did the dishes for you, go take a bath. Mm -hmm. um, and then they start to become aroused because they're relaxed. Right. Yeah, and validated maybe. Yes. <laughs> These are two very different approaches. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's important to note that we are talking in general here. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So not all women are gonna be one way and all men are gonna be one right. way. Right. Um, what are some other yes. misunderstandments that couples have that? Well, you know, sometimes I see this a lot in our fantasies, fantasies, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And they can be taboo to talk about or what we want. Um, and so we just assume that our, our partner might understand it by our body language or our moan or our like shifting one mm -hmm. way, but we get awkward in the mm -hmm. moment and we don't want to ask for what we really want. Right, which goes back to the communication. Yes, okay. yes. Or we're ashamed of that fantasy okay. and we're ashamed of what our partner is going to think about us, say about us. Um, and so just kind of opening up that dialogue and mm -hmm. normalizing right. fantasies for right. couples is, is very important. Right. Well, you can have an open and honest dialogue because, uh, again, sometimes we make assumptions uh, that it's a certain way or that you feel a certain thing. But if I'm not honest in my fantasy and I'm holding back and I just hope that you read my mind, mm -hmm. and now I'm frustrated that you're not reading it and figuring it, uh, figuring it out. Mm -hmm. um, and so part of intimacy uh, is allowing ourselves to be seen, to be known. But part of that requires honesty. Right. Um, so can I honestly share my fantasies, even things that I may be a little shameful of or embarrassed about, is this relationship solid enough uh, and I want to take that risk to allow myself to, to be known, even as it relates to sexual fantasies. Mm -hmm. Right, definitely. That mm -hmm. honest, I'm glad you brought that up, that honest communication, and you've got to have that trust. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Yeah. That you're going to re be received positively and warmly. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. Even if your, your partner doesn't necessarily want to do that same thing, totally. they can at least mm -hmm. affirm, okay, I see that's important for you. Mm -hmm. And I may lean into that direction at some point, but at least now I can at least affirm and acknowledge that that's important for you. Mm -hmm. Right, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for us talking about this in the sense of that communication. Mm -hmm. it's, it's key. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. It's and huge. I think it's one of the key parts of overcoming sexual problems is talking about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not only talking about it, but also um, being aware of our own bodies. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And knowing what ourselves would we like and what mm -hmm. we dislike and that kind Very of true. stuff. Yes. Yeah. And so we're going to take a small break right now. And then when we come back, we're going to get on some tips on how to overcome these problems or some sexual problems that couples may be having. Uh, growing up, I had uh, many, many teachers in my life who taught me many wonderful things. Uh, one of the things or one of the areas that they did not teach me a lot about was in the area of sexuality. Um, so it was not until uh, grad school that I got in touch with many mentors and teachers who were able to, uh, to educate me in that way. Uh, over the course of my career, I realized that many men were uh, lacking in this area as well, where we were not actively cared for in the sexual area of our life. And so part of uh, my passion has been coming alongside men to help them in this particular area uh, where uh, I believe most men want to be good sexually, uh, where we don't want to abuse our sexuality, we don't want to misuse our sexuality. Again, we've just not been taught how uh, to do any better. Uh, so there's a way where we can uh, find a better vision for our sexuality. Uh, from a godly perspective, why was our sexuality created? Uh, create to reflect uh, the intimacy of God, create to reflect the, the goodness of God, create to, uh, to reflect the beauty of God. And many guys have no vision of that. Uh, so being able to find that, that vision for our sexuality um, and with an intention to now live that vision out. Uh, what are those, those means? What are those behaviors that allow us uh, to live uh, truly well as a sexual being? We're in all our relationships, our relationships with our, our spouse, our relationship with, with our friends, our relationship with God can now be enhanced when we tap into to that sexual energy. That sexual energy is no longer wasted um, on um, mindless pursuits. Uh, that sexual energy can now be used to cultivate life, to bring more goodness uh, to the world around us.
Welcome back. This is the Bringing Intimacy Back. And my name is Dr. April. I'm the host where intimacy here is real. And today we've been talking about overcoming sexual problems. And in our last segment, we were reviewing over um, many times it's communication, communicating with each other on what we like and what we dislike and communicating, learning about our own body and stuff. And so right now in this segment here, we have couples of people out there that are struggling. They um, are struggling whether, like you say, one person may want sex more than the other. Mm -hmm. What tips can you guys provide our couples out there who are struggling? Yeah. Yeah, so that's great. I like to say to most of my couples um, that if it's not on the calendar, then it's probably not going to get done. And I'm not talking about the couples who are having sex regularly and they're satisfied. You don't need to get out your calendar and start <laughs> scheduling anything. But if you find yourself laying in bed at night going, oh, I'm just so exhausted. Right. I don't have time for this anymore. I don't want to be touched. Like we should have done this like five hours ago when I had some energy. I like to tell them then it might be something we want to open up to putting it on the calendar, mm -hmm. right? And so a, a super simple way uh, to do this is figure out a number that you're both comfortable with scheduling. So some couples might say once a week, to get started. Okay. Some might say four times a week. Um, one partner might want it to be twice a day. So you really just kind of come to right. a compromise of what you want. And then I say schedule intimacy so it doesn't have to be, you know, intercourse right. only. So it's just that time together as a couple where you just pay attention to each other and you're with each other, you're with each other's bodies. Maybe it's a sensual massage or you take a shower together but putting it on the calendar and then kind of holding each other accountable um, to do what you're both okay with doing that day. Yeah, okay. I like that. And I uh, term it to, uh, to a lot of my clients as a, a working date. Um, mm -hmm. So it's finding time uh, to deal with the intimate part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that working date, it may be uh, simply starting that dialogue. Um, and so how is the sexual part of our life? Um, so it's just open up what do we think. And so, mm -hmm. um, what would it mean to you to have more or less sex um, than what we're currently having? Right. So now I get to know your heart. Uh, again, mm -hmm. back to intimacy. What does it mean to you to have more? What does it mean to have less? How is it going? When things go well, all right, how do we celebrate that? When things don't go well, how do we want to handle those things? Mm -hmm. uh, so talking through frequency, talking through um, the different props, talking through um, all the different aspects uh, of the relationship outside the bedroom. And right. so it's not a time where, all right, let's have mm -hmm. sex right now. Long before you get there, having that working date to be able to talk through some of those things mm -hmm. uh, so that you're not misunderstanding each other or having uh, unmet expectations in that moment. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I like how you put you have to schedule it because some people yes. think, oh, my gosh, yes. scheduling, you know, intimacy is right. crazy, but we schedule everything else mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. Sure. And I so. often hear from couples. Well, then it's just not spontaneous. Right. Well, yes, it can be. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It can be spontaneous. It's on the calendar, yes. you'd be like, well, I know what I want to do tonight. I'm not going to tell her. And then we're just going to spontaneously <laughs> right. do it. You right. Know? And so we schedule vacations and we can still have fun on vacation. Yes. So, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. What other tips could you guys give our audience members? Uh, I would say find uh, a good book to read. Um, and so um, yes. finding something to educate yourself. Where a lot of our education actually stopped in junior high, high school sex ed. Yes. Um, yes. So finding a good book that talks about functioning and talks about different mm -hmm. uh, desires uh, so that we can educate ourselves um, so that we're not, not limited. And maybe even reading that book to each other. Mm -hmm. um, where a lot of times we're not comfortable talking mm -hmm. about sex. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so using this book but not only to educate a, ourselves. A way of open up the or, conversation. Right. Yes, yes. Right. And most of the books have tips and exercises and all that stuff in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love a guide to getting it on. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's a super simple, huge book mm -hmm. with a lot of detail. Yeah. Okay. I also like adding things like erotica novels in right. there because sometimes it can help both uh, partners kind of get in the mood in their mind first. Mm -hmm. And maybe they can even play out a scene if they're feeling awkward and they don't know what to do right. um, or something new to try. It's there in the book and you can give it a try, right? Mm -hmm. um, or even taking a date night and going to a novelty mm -hmm. shop. That's always exactly. fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's different ways of inspiring them to be creative mm -hmm. and not just limited in a box. Right. Yes, being creative. Yes, yes, it's, it's a yes. yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, because sometimes without that education, we just think, 
one way. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we get in our routines, and there's nothing wrong with uh, those, those routines, what mm -hmm. works for a couple, but every once in a while, something outside of that box, being very creative. Yes, yes, yes definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, as I said, we've been listening, um, we have audience members who may be wanting to get to know more information about you guys. Mm -hmm. So, tell, first tell us how we can get to connect with you. Yeah, my website is sextherapyofatlanta.com. And um, all of my information's on there. Uh, my email, Facebook, phone. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, two different sites. Um, so my uh, site for uh, sex therapy is at intimatemarriage.org. Uh, and then my personal site is at coreycarlisle.org. Okay, thank you guys so much. And thank you guys for listening to the show.